Good morning. We are recording. <laughs> it's a thankful Thursday. I'm Elizabeth Inman. This is our Dream Big Today morning one-year Bible study. We also have new nuggets. Happens at 12 noon Central Standard Time. Our morning Bible study where we do the one-year Bible happens at 8 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Kim Bright's on with us. Kim, I listened to your new nugget the other day, and you did an absolutely fantastic job. All of the teachers do a fantastic job. I've been reaching out to a couple of our men spiritual leaders, asking them to do some of our Bible teachings, and happy to say that I think here before too much longer, we'll have some men that'll be doing some of our Bible studies with us as well. Be excited to end to add some of our men leaders. Debbie Nolan, hello, hello. There's Jacqueline, hi there. There's Cassie. Oh, Cassie, I'm glad you like the additional new nuggets. That's good. There's Michelle, hi, Michelle. Yay. Glad to see everybody on this morning. Miss Eileen giving us our morning hugs. Hi, Myra. Everybody's up bright and early this morning. There's Christy. Happy birthday, Christy. Happy, happy birthday. Today's the day the world will become a better place because you were born. We celebrate you today. There's Rita. Oh, we're praying for your grandson. Oh, yes. Rita, we got that one down. Thank you for allowing us the honor and the privilege to pray for your grandson. Anybody else with prayer requests, please put them in the comment section. We will definitely be praying. We also love to see the praise reports. We love to join together with you in faith for prayer. We know that God hears our prayers. We know that he answers our prayers. March the 16th. 2023 we're reading in numbers chapters 24 and 25 today i'm just going to tell you that god stretched me today i don't know what y'all are going to think about what i'm going to say but i'm going to say it because i just share with you what i hear what i see when i read so um <laughs> it starts right off we've been reading about balaam God spoke to Balaam through a donkey. We read that Balaam was indeed a prophet. Balaam was recognized by the people as a prophet. Balaam was recognized by God as a prophet. Jacqueline, we will pray for your family and we will pray for you. We have you down in our prayer journal. Thank you for giving us the honor and the privilege of praying, Jacqueline. We love you. God loves you. So even though Balaam was a, maybe I should say a questionable person. I don't exactly think I know what words I want to describe. I know that God wants us to recognize that there were issues with Balaam. In today's reading, it says that he that Balaam decided not to resort to divination as before. So even though he was recognized as a prophet, God recognized him as a prophet. He did what he did oftentimes through divination, not through the power of God. Now, I'm telling you, back in that day, that was considered evil. Back in this day, or up in this day, maybe I should say, that's considered evil. The gift of discernment that God gives me would caution me to stay away from people like that. And yet, God chose him to use him and gave him words to speak. Good morning, Mama Mary. Okay, so 
bear with me. I'm just going to share my heart this morning. There have been times that I have. Okay, so Kim Bright has a prayer request. Yes, definitely. 38-year-old Eric. We will pray for Eric, Kim. Um, there's a 19-year-old named Mercy that was on the prayer request last night at church. She's 19 years old that I can't even remember. I think it's cancer. Isn't it cancer? Okay. No, 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 no. Um, the 19-year-old the that's lost both legs and now going to amputate both arms. I think it's cancer. Uh, anyway, Mercy is her name. Uh, we want to pray for Mercy and we want to pray for her parents and her family. 19 years, years old. Okay, so back to the text. <laughs> back to what God has shown me. Let me just say, let me tell you what I thought. How about that? I want to, I, I don't want it to be, I want it to be what my thoughts were as I read this morning. I'm going to sneeze and get something out of me this morning. It's got to go. Thank you, Lord, for sneezes because they get stuff out of us. Thank you, Lord, for sneezes. It's amazing how he created this body. Okay, so there's been times in my life when Let's just say, you know, I I care and I care deeply. So when I'm doing life with somebody, let's just, I'm just going to use an imaginary situation. Let's just say I'm doing life with a really, really good friend of mine. And a really, really good friend of mine is having a struggle. And they're sharing it with me. And, oh, you know, I, because I care so deeply and because they they care enough and they trust me enough that they're going to share their struggles with me. Oh my goodness. I want to help them. I just, with everything in me, I want to help them, but I see them making the wrong decisions. And, you know, I can get so caught up in that whole situation that I can just move in i can i can instead of focusing inward and getting quiet and going into intercessory prayer for them i focus outward and i make it all about them do you do you understand what i'm saying i focus outward and i make it all about them and it's all of a sudden it's their problem it's their it's there. It's, it's, it's all about them. It's all about them. And then the next thing, you know, I'm giving it advice and I'm telling them, oh, they need to, they, this, that, and the other. And, and then if they don't follow what I want them to do, it steals my joy. I'm telling you, I read this this morning by now, Balaam realized that the Lord was determined to bless Israel, so he did not resort to divination as before. In, instead, he turned and looked out toward the wilderness where he saw the people of Israel camped, tribe by tribe. Then the Spirit of God came upon him, and this is the message he delivered. In, in my mind, what he said was, what, what this says, what this passage says is that Balaam gave up his, Balaam gave up his earthly, his carnal way of doing things and decided to do it God's way. And did you read the results of doing it God's way instead of doing it his way i mean wow uh, let's just read i better grab my glasses because i don't want to get this wrong oh my goodness what a blessing is karen going to come in she should come in and set for box okay so we just had such a blessing brought in we had lunch brought in for us today with dessert donna says Bless. So we pray blessings and blessings on her. 
So this is the message of Balaam, son of Bor, the message of the man whose eyes see clearly, the message of one who hears the words of God. Oh my goodness, God, I just pray that we that are listening gets this. That these words sinks into our spirit, that we hear clearly, that we see clearly, Father God, what you would have us to see. Lord, that Elizabeth hears clearly, that Elizabeth sees clearly. Father, that when we focus on the things of this earth, we get so confused, we get so jumbled up, we just get we just get exasperated. We just, we get exhausted. We get stressed. We get anxious. But Lord, when we, when we turn inward to where your spirit lives on the inside of us and we listen and we decide to be still, then we hear clearly. Then, then these words, our eyes see clearly the message of the one who hears the words of God comes. We see the vision from the Almighty. We bow down with eyes wide open. Thank you, Father. And Balaam says, how beautiful are your tents, O Jacob. How lovely are your homes. Listen to this blessing that he speaks. Now, I want you to understand he's speaking to the Israelites. He's speaking to the Israelites. Have you been reading? We're on day 75. Are the Israelites perfect? Are the Israelites without sin? Do you know how often we have somebody in front of us that's coming to us that are desperate, that needs help? They don't know what to do. They're at their wits end. They just don't know. I mean, they just don't know what to do. They're desperate. And all we see is their sin. All we want to address is the last time they messed up. Instead of seeing clearly and seeing things the way God, Balaam did not want to bless the people of Israel. He was a reluctant. As I've read this the last three days, the word that kept coming to me about Balaam is he was a reluctant prophet. I don't even profess to think I understand everything about Balaam. I've never had the insights into this story like I'm getting this year. And what that means, what that means is that there's much, much more to come for me. I've learned through reading all the way through the Bible when I stopped, when I stopped just picking certain scriptures here and there, like for instance, I've quoted that if God will speak to a donkey, he'll speak, speak to me so many times, but I've just plucked that scripture out of this story to make it fit. And I'm not even saying that was wrong, but I'm getting, I'm sharing my story with you in part because I'm still, I know I'm still seeing in part this morning. I'm, I'm confessing that up front to you guys. Because I know some of you get very frustrated in reading all the way through the Bible. I know some of you guys are thinking, oh, I don't even have to read these Old Testament stories. What, what difference does it make? And I'm being real with you that the last three days, I'm getting more of this story than I've ever gotten in all the times. You know, this particular Bible, the one year Bible I've read, I don't know, 21 times, not counting all the other times I've studied. It's the first time I've had the thought that perhaps Balaam was a reluctant prophet. It's the first time I've stopped to think that, oh my goodness, he practiced divination. And yet God chose to use him as a prophet. I looked up, I think it was yesterday, that was he even really a prophet? I, I mean, I was doubting that he was recognized as a prophet, but the historians recognize him as a prophet. Some of them recognize him just as God's prophet. When I looked it up, there are those that see Balaam as God's prophet. And then there are those that says he was a wicked prophet. This all leads me to today when it is written 
that he practiced divination and yet listen to the blessing that God spoke through Balaam. But then what grasped me, what got me was look at who he was speaking to because he just said, Balaam said, the message of the man whose eyes see clearly, that's Balaam. The message of one who hears the words of God, that's Balaam. He's not perfect. He's far from perfect. Do you know how many times I disqualify myself from being the one that maybe God wants to speak through because I'm not perfect? Do you know how many times Anyway, uh, let me keep going. <laughs> Who's, who sees a vision from Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. See, that bowing down is the symbolism of his surrender in that moment. He, he finally reached the place. This was the third time that of the struggle. See, the struggle was so different for Balaam than what I have. You know, when I have that person come to me you know, this friend of mine, I'm using this as an example because we can all relate to that. We've got somebody that, that man, their struggle is real and we just want to help them. Now, Balaam's not wanting to help him because his life is on the line. Balak will kill him. If he doesn't do what Balak wants him to do, Balak will kill him. I'm making it easy on us to think about helping somebody. But this person coming up, that's struggling, I may want to, to point out to them what they're doing wrong all the time. I mean, chances are that's what I want to do. That's Chances are that's what my tendency is. When I'm in my flesh, I want to say, well, of course they said that to you because you did this. Well, if you'd stop going to the casino all the time, well, if you'd just stop drinking, well, if you'd just stop smoking that weed all the time, if you'd stop and the list goes on and on. If you stop cussing, well, if you just go to church once in a while, I mean, my list is this long, folks, of the things that my flesh wants to say. But, but here's the deal. When that list is that long about the Israelites, for crying out loud, God's had to send plagues how many times to kill off the evil within the Israelites. They keep messing up. The Israelites are not perfect. The Israelites are God's chosen people. They're his precious people, but they're not perfect. But you know what? That friend that keeps coming to me with an issue, they're God's chosen people. They're not perfect, but they're God's chosen people. Who sees a vision from the Almighty, who bows down with eyes wide open. This is what we'll see. How beautiful are your tents how lovely are your homes they spread before me like palm groves like gardens by the riverside they're like tall trees planted by the lord like cedars besides besides the waters water will flow from their buckets their offspring have all they need now right there for many years that's been a promise for me for my children their king will be greater than Agag. Agog, their kingdom will be exalted. God brought them out of Egypt. For them, for them, he is as strong as a wild ox. He devours all the nations that oppose them, breaking their bones in pieces, shooting them with arrows. Like a lion, Israel crouches and lies down like a lioness. Who dares arouse her? Blessed is everyone who blesses you. And cursed is everyone who curses you. What a blessing. He spoke over Israel, the reluctant prophet. The prophet who oftentimes does what he does through divination when he surrendered to God and allowed God to use him. If he'll use Balaam, oh Lord, perhaps he'll use me. And perhaps when I'm trying to in earnestness, I'm trying to help my friend, but all I can point out is their sins. Perhaps I'm practicing def divination. Now, that's what came to me. I told you, did I tell you that God's stretching me a little bit this morning? Would that match the definition in the dictionary? Probably not. But my question this morning is, maybe that's God's definition. 
because I know that when that friend is coming to me to help and all I want to do is point out the speck in their eye as I have a log in mine. Uh, that's what I got this morning from the story of Balaam. Wow. And even Balaam, when the king flew in a rage against him, said, even if you were to give me a palace filled with silver and gold, I would be powerless to do anything against the will of God. I told you that I could only say what the Lord says. You know, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. I no longer want to be that when that person comes up to me, that I see anything except what God sees in that person. I want to see the greatness in that person. God never stopped seeing the greatness in Israel. Yes, because there was no regenerating power of the Holy Spirit that indwelled in his people. He had no choice but to annihilate evil so that evil would not overtake his people. The love God had for his people was so great that he would never allow evil to overtake his people in the Old Testament. Under the Old Covenant. And he loved them so much that he was willing to die to keep that from happening to us. We live under a new covenant. And we're coming up on the Easter season when we get to celebrate the massive difference that we live under. I mean, oh, that we would get a new awareness of the massive change between old covenant and new covenant that will no longer feel the rage of God against us, against our evil, against our sins. Because Jesus took that rage on himself. Which leads us right into the New Testament. The birth of our Savior. Leading into this Easter season. We're 24 days away from Easter. I'm always in awe as I read during this time of the year. How these stories in this one year Bible lead us up to Easter. <laughs> Oh, that I would have a vision from the Almighty. Oh, that I would bow down with eyes wide open. Oh, that I would get the message and be the one who hears the words of God. The, the, I would be the woman whose eyes see clearly. That's my desire today, Father God. That's my prayer for you today on this thankful Thursday through the story of Balaam of all stories. Wow. On this thankful Thursday, let's set ourselves on this day to pra practice thankfulness. I love you guys. <laughs>